All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for this afternoon's uh, webinar around reservation and dispatch services. We are very fortunate today to have an esteemed uh, panel of uh, several folks, as you can see here, hopefully. Um, my name is Sean Arena. I'm the president of Limo Anywhere. I've got a few folks behind the scenes that are also helping us manage this, this webinar. A couple of uh, housekeeping rules before we get started. So this will be a Q&A session with the various folks here on the call. Um, we will open it up at the end, uh, time permitting to actually answer any relevant questions that have been posed in the Q&A chat that you'll see below at the bottom. And uh, we'll rehash uh, the offer as well that is going to be extended to those individuals um, that attended the call, uh, should you choose to take advantage of a special offer that has been provided by our, our guests here today. So without further ado, I would like to welcome my, my three guests. Uh, starting at the top left, we have uh, Joey Allen, co-founder of Limo Command. Um, below Joey, we have Lisa Harding, who is the COO of uh, Limo Live 24, and Arnie Adamson, who is the head of sales for Limo Live 24. Uh, I've got a little bit of a bio for Lisa and Arnie, and we'll pass it over to, to Joey afterwards to give a little bit of background on himself. But Lisa has uh, been an instrumental partner in Limo Live 24 with three degrees from Temple University with over 25 years of experience in the technology call center world and now 15 years of livery call center experience. Arnie has over 10 years of experience in the livery call center world and over 20 years uh, as a previous business owner. He, as I said, is responsible for new accounts at Limo Live 24, worked with hundreds of operators across the US and Canada in a collection of over 30 Limo convention badges at his office, which I do not, um, I'm not surprised at all, given how many times I've seen him out and about at all the various shows. So um, why don't we pass it over to you, Joey, to uh, provide a quick background on yourself as well. Thank you. Uh, so I apologize for not getting mine uh, over to Sean in a timely manner. That's why you have to hear me talk about myself. Um, we have been operators. Uh, we're located in Oklahoma City. We've been operators here for 15 years, and we have had uh, limo command for the last five. And uh, although I can't boast as many um, show passes and, and show badges as Arnie, we have made a couple, we have made a few. So it's, it's good to see everyone this morning. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and jump right in and get started with some of these questions that I would like to pose to the panel here. Um, obviously, it's no surprise to anybody that uh, the current pandemic has uh, rocked our industry to the core. And it's really forced everybody to reimagine how um, we run our business. So let me uh, pose the first question to uh, you, Joey. Um, and then we'll revert over to, to Arnie and Lisa to, to field it from their perspective as well. Um, how has the pandemic forced you to reimagine your service offering um, in terms of changing needs brought about by our operator customers in the, in the industry? Sure, thank you. And, and I should say as well, thank you, Sean and the rest of the Limo Anywhere team for, for having us today. And thank you, Lisa and Arnie for participating with us. It's great for everybody to be here. Um, so. Like most of the operators that, that, uh, that we know, our industry is tied directly to what's happening uh, with the operators. And so when the operator's business slowed down, our business slowed down dramatically right along with you. And so we had to have had to come up with ways to you know, determine how we continue to operate, how we continue to keep people employed, and how we continue to serve our clients. And we knew that we had to come up with some creative ways to make that happen. And uh, so we, we have been able to uh, come up with some service offerings that we think cater to and allow people to have a lower uh, weekly or monthly cost and be able to retain their service. And uh, I won't go into all of those changes right now, but those are things that I'd be happy to, uh, or our team would be happy to, to speak with anyone about in the future. Um, and it, we've also used this time of being, uh, you know, with, with fewer phone calls and, and fewer uh, emails and fewer reservations and all those things to uh, re, 
uh, to revamp our training process and to go in and work with our agents to make sure that uh, we have been able to raise the bar of service through this time instead of just, uh, you know, instead of just kind of being stale. Great. Okay. Um, Arnie or, or Lisa, would you like to chime in from Luma Live's perspective? I don't know of an industry other than transportation that suffered a 97.5% cancellation rate in the last half of March and in April. I mean, just the fact that there's companies still operating after that level of cancellation is really a testament to your business acumen and you know your desire to succeed. We took a step back and we literally did whatever we had to do to help someone keep their phone covered, keep their costs down, and to make sure that their revenue source, which is the telephone and the email, were covered. So we've been, let's say, very creative and flexible over the last seven months. I mean, we have people that have very small plans. We're seeing a turnaround because we serve so many different markets in the United States and Canada. Again, it's market dependent, but people are shifting instead of, I only do corporate, I only do retail. People are now saying and coming up with ideas like, what can I do to generate a special night out with all the restrictions and limo owner operators have come up with some great ideas and we share these best practices. Dine and drive, pick people up at their home, take them to a very nice restaurant where they get takeout, they get taken to a park, to a beach, out in the uh, national forest or a state park, have dinner and take them home. So those are some of the creative ideas that we've seen. And what we've done, we've literally done almost anything that we can do as long as it's legal to help these limo owner operators keep their phone covered. Sure. That's great. No, like you said, everybody's had to either pivot or, or evolve in their, their models. Um, you know, we, uh, we here at Limo Anywhere clearly, you know, recognize the need for um, cost relief as well. There is obviously a very cost conscious focus. Um, public wise, as you've said, there's a lack of confidence in travel per, uh, in general, not just ground. We've seen around which you stated uh, north of 90 plus percent um, at the worst point within the pandemic, it's crept down to about 70% uh, lower year over year than what it was. And it continues to improve every month. So, so hopefully we'll get uh, back into a full rebound. I know you mentioned before we joined the call, Arnie, that um, TSA announced today, I think 1 million screenings, which on average, uh, they were typically seeing 2.2 in, in the normal time frame uh, prior to the pandemic, which is, if true, really, really positive news in, in terms of just a, a general. That was in one day, Sean. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, um, good to hear. Uh, we also, um, we recognize that, uh, you know, traveler confidence, as I said, is, is key. And so we're investing in some capabilities at Limo Anywhere for our operators to provide uh, higher QC and, and quality assurance for their travelers in terms of notifying them that the cars have been cleaned, that masks are being worn, that there's sanitizer in the car, all through a, a virtual checklist that operators or drivers can use. In terms of when you're talking to your customers uh, or our mutual customers, and you touched upon this briefly, Arnie, so I can start with you or we can um, go to Lisa as well. What, what are you hearing from, from them in terms of common challenges or, or needs that have emerged recently due to the pandemic? In terms of operationally, uh, that would be a question that Lisa would handle. Just in terms of sales, we're telling people, think like a startup again. You started your business once. This is almost the exact same scenario. You're going to have to adjust, make decisions that will impact your revenue positively, and wherever you get a chance, cut corners, defer payments, car payments, lease payments, insurance. Um, I talked to the head of an association 
right at the very beginning, I asked him, what are the big boys doing? And he said something so profound to me, I will never forget it. He said, Arnie, there are no more big operators. The 70 car operators, if they're lucky, they're running 10 cars. So the entire industry, with just a few exceptions, is between one and 10 cars. Yeah. In terms wow. of operationally, I'll toss that over to Lisa. You know, operationally, the conversations that we're mostly having is how we can revamp their, you know, what they're doing internally with the staff that they have and, you know, what X person did for them or Y person did for them and then how one of our agents can jump in and um, help out with um, some sidebar stuff that we don't typically do, but we're doing it to help them move along um, and get going. One of the things is, you know, downsizing their staff. They're stuck now, um, you know, in different parts of their business, one on paper hangers, um, employees, even when they are starting to vamp up, you know, they put employees on furlough or unemployment and employees aren't coming back. And, and you know, operationally, reservation and dispatch, um, you know, training for that takes months and to, to land a, an important employee that's reliable and there for you, I mean, that's, they're hard to you know, replace. So leasing them is very, it's, you know, it's unsettling, especially nervous. I mean, our biggest asset to our company is our employees. You know, we had to make a, um, a lot of changes so I can, we can keep our staff going, avoid the unemployment. Um, so this way we have them ready and available for everybody when, when things and also the cars, uh, everything starts picking up. But for the most part, um, operationally, it's just being there, having long conversations, telling them how we can additionally help them. And what I'm seeing mostly is just more office type uh, work that they can't get to because they're maybe now out, out and about and they're, you know, doing a little bit more that they, you know, had employees do for them. And we're, and we're taking that on for them. Right. Joey, would you care to, to add to that from your yeah. perspective? Sure, I, and I'll just echo what Lisa and Arnie says. Um, I, thing is, you know, you're we're just kind of chief cook and bottle washer. I mean, it didn't really matter what needs to be done, whether it's cleaning a bathroom, cleaning a car, or taking a reservation, or paying a bill. You know, the operators are just doing whatever they need to do. And I think the perfect, you know, we started our businesses once. It's time that we have to kind of go back to that mindset. And and I think the important thing to remember is. Um, you know, the, not that it has never been this way, but every phone call and every email is precious. I mean, you know, and that needs to be answered live because if somebody is getting an answering machine and it really doesn't matter whether it's two o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the afternoon, if I get an answering machine, I'm moving on to the next person on my list to call to see if I can get the service taken care of. That's just the world that we live in. And so if we're not making accommodations to make sure that our phones are answered, uh, or that emails or, or quotes or reservations are responded to in a timely manner, then our clients are going to be looking elsewhere because it's just, you know, it's, I think it's just where we are as a society at this moment. It, you almost think that maybe that business is closed if there's nobody that's answering the phone. So, you know, we are, um, we want to make sure that we are there to, to help the operators um, to make sure that every phone call is being answered, every email is being responded to, um, and that, and that we're, doing our best to close that sale, to close that ride on the first phone call so that multiple return calls and those kind of things don't need to take place. So uh, I, think it's, I think it's customer service is just king right now. And sure. I think it's really important to make sure that we're answering those calls live. And you mentioned service. I think if there's, I guess, any silver lining to the situation at hand, and, and I've read this in a few different outlets, uh, uh, and heard firsthand from our customers that that there has been somewhat of a natural gravitation over to chauffeur service uh, away from some of the TNCs and others in the industry, uh, just due to the fact that people want that higher level of quality and reassurance um, that they would get, especially in these times um, when you know safety and and whatnot are, are top of mind for for the traveling public. So. Um, hopefully that will continue to remain a trend. Um, Absolutely. So, so speaking of service, as you just said, and as I just said, you know, chauffeur uh, car is a luxury service um, with, with higher expectations uh, across all of the different touch points, much higher than what you would expect or see with, through a, a taxi or, or a rideshare type um, environment. So what do you do 
and we'll start with you, Joey, um, and then and move down to Arnie and, and uh, Lisa. But what do you do uh, to ensure that level of expected service is met, uh, if not hopefully exceeded? Well, I mean, everything in our world comes back to training. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether you're an operator or whether you're in our business. It, everything comes back to training. And as I mentioned earlier, we took this time to go through all of our training documents, every, every handbook, every policy and procedure, everything from, from beginning to end, and made sure that everything was current and tried to determine uh, in conjunction with our, with our agents. I mean, they were part of this process to say, you know, hey, could we do this better? Could we do this differently? Is there a way to, to, to cut out this step so that things flow more expeditiously? So we used this time to review training and to improve um, hopefully our overall, the overall experience. Um, we have put into place those quality control checks. We have a service excellence manager whose responsibility it is on a daily and weekly basis to review phone calls, to review the way that emails are, are formatted and sent, to, re, to review the way that reports are uh, and, and uh, call messages are sent to clients, to do all of those things to make sure that, um, you know, not only is our client, the operator, getting the best possible experience, but that when we're answering the phone for our client's client, which is the person who pays everybody's bill, uh, you know, that, that they're absolutely receiving just a, a turnkey direct flow through service so that they hopefully never even realize that they've reached someone outside of the office they were calling. Great. Lisa, Arnie? I'll take it, Arnie. So, we, we were very similar, Joey. Um, we followed the same practices um, with making sure that we took the time to, we own our own software and development. So we took the time to do things that agents have been requesting um, and also revamping and retraining. And the majority of our agents have been with us for 10 plus years. So they've, they're very weathered in, in the industry as well as, um, you know, we have a 12 year relationship with Lumo Anywhere. So our, our agents, um, more or less, we geared towards um, not only retraining, re uh, quality control, we actually uh, rebuilt our quality, took the time to rebuild our quality control module, um, where it's built into our software at this point, and it could be, they can get tickers as they're um, on the live call and so forth. So we took some projects and, and utilized this time as well to um, basically uh, work on our efficiency and so forth. And we also put some different metrics in place on our QA with our um, call, basically our whole time reports, our um, average call to and our TTA reports. We took and we revamped everything, um, even our dashboard that our agents have seen. So for us, we did utilize this time in the right way to make sure that we were preparing for our future. And, you know, but, you know, what, one of the things that was important to us was retaining the staff because we too, as a business, um, had to, we took a loss because of the industry taking a loss with the calls stopped ringing. And you can only obviously go a certain amount of time um, with that revenue drop and keeping people happy and keeping your, you know, um, operations and your staying to budget and so forth because payroll for us is our biggest expense. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the so retaining the staff. So luckily we're part of a larger division and our, in, in our industry, we run our operations, obviously out in Las Vegas is transportation only, but we're part of a larger operations um, that's able to, we were able to retain our employees by understanding that the limo agents, they are the most important agents. You know, they are, are you know, they're harder to train, they're harder to, to you know, make, they're, they're, they're keeping so much information for individual businesses. Um, in their heads as they're and also looking at the software and you know every client is different every member is different for us um they're all located all over the united states so our agents um are you know they they know a lot they know a lot about each they get very involved in each and everyone's profile so for us we made sure that every employee stayed um active and engaged we put people off into different um programs of marketing, calling our clients and asking, what is it that we can do for you? Um, giving, we came up with um, office ideas of, you know, how we can um, help them, uh, whether it's, you know, teaching them about operations and what they can do within their internally with saving money and staying afloat themselves, how they can market different 
um, ideas like Arnie was talking about with, you know, different types of rides and things like that and how we can sell that, how we can help them sell that um, and how they can drive that business and how they can put it out there. But Arnie, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Well, as Joey mentioned, our goal is always to remain individual. The, we call them the guest versus the member, which is the customer of our services, so that the guest has a seamless experience. Literally, our goal is to be a silent partner in a livery operations growth. To that end, you know, we've been hard at it for 15 years and with this pandemic, everybody now really appreciates, first of all, the fact that they have a job, that their job is rewarding and we're not seeing, quote unquote, the COVID fatigue yet that they're talking about nationally in terms of the public and employees. So that's something for operators to be aware of. People are getting very tired of being cooped up. Conversely, because of that, there's now something that is being discussed called revenge travel. So be prepared mentally that once there's a vaccine and the public as Sean has mentioned, trust return, you could see a very rapid turnaround in terms of not only yeah. leisure travel, but business travel. So mentally be prepared for that. No, I, 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 I was snickering or laughing because it, I think that actually bears two different uh, interpretations. One being, like you said, uh, a resurgence of travel, uh, uh, increased or dramatic pace, which I do think is very possible given the acceleration of vaccines and therapeutics. I think the other part of the revenge travel angle I was, I was somewhat laughing about is people have been so cooped up that, that the level of expectations and the heightened uh, level of anxiety when they get back out there is going to require um, a very customer service oriented, very patient um, mentality uh, with all of the different providers of travel. Uh, a high degree of empathy, high degree of empathy, um, because I know, you know, I myself am about to be traveling for the first time in quite a while, in about a month, uh, to, to Colorado, and, um, you know, IATA just came out, I believe, with a study that said uh, it was like less than 1% chance of contracting the virus on a, on a plane, um, just due to the, the circulation and the way folks were seated, with, if everybody's wearing a mask. Um, but even still, you know, of course, uh, that's when you're on the plane, but the end to end journey still has a lot of different touch points. Um, so speaking of end to end, so everybody here clearly knows who Limo Anywhere is. You yourself, um, I believe Lisa mentioned, you know, you've been partners with us for 12 years, um, but not everybody on the call is probably familiar with all the ins and outs of, of what Limo Command and Limo Live 24 um, do for customers. So from that perspective, if you don't mind just, you know, your quick, one to two minute elevator pitch uh, sure. of what you're all about, um, what's your unique value proposition um, and, and what services that you offer. I think that would be very beneficial for our, our listeners to um, understand both from, from you, Lisa and Arnie and then um, Joey as well when you have a, a second. Yeah, that's the perfect question, Sean. A Little Life 24 is a full service reservation and dispatch service. We're located in Las Vegas, Nevada and we've been in business 15 years. We quote, book, modify, cancel, contact the driver, optional service of driver wake-up calls. We act as your back office when you can't and before COVID didn't want to cover the phone. These days, it's almost a requirement that you cover the phone. Our goal literally, as I mentioned earlier, is to remain invisible to our operators' clients. To that end, we're not a fit for everybody, but the vast majority of people who take our trial stay with us and have been with us for almost the entire time that this company has been in operation. We have members that have 14, almost 15 years of experience with our company, and we're very proud of that. Fantastic. Joey? Sure. So uh, very similar in, in regards to, we do everything from very basic message taking up to full 24 seven uh, reservations dispatch support. So um, if you are interested in just basic message taking, I mean, we can, do, we can do very basic things all the way up to and including 
um, full phone and, and email support. Uh, we can make change, cancel reservations. We can assist with dispatching. We can um, you know, get the, the passengers and the chauffeurs together for an airport or standing on a street or whatever the case might be. We can do wake up calls. We can close trips. We can do invoicing. We can do uh, updated chauffeur uh, payroll in that process. So, and, and of course, all of those things within the Limo Anywhere system. So that's, you know, in a nutshell, what we do. Right. So one question that somewhat dovetails to that in terms of, in a, in a prior part of the, the conversation with respect to emerging trends and expanding your services, what others, what are some other, and I'll start with you, Joey, some other things that operators can do um, uh, to challenge, you know, what has traditionally been some, some of their fixed costs in this current environment uh, in terms of uh, either outsourcing and or just thinking differently about their business that you might be able to impart um, for the listeners here to consider. Absolutely. Well, you've heard me say it and you've heard Lisa and Arnie say it already. Um, the, it's at this point, at this stage of the game, we have to look at as operators, uh, we have to look at every dollar that's going into and out of our business and how we, you know, cash is king right now. So how do we hang on to the most uh, of those dollars that we possibly can? There are a lot of services that can be outsourced at a much less expensive rate on the shared services model, which is basically what, what I, think, I think Arnie and Lisa would agree, it's what both of our companies operate off of is that shared services model. And so with our partnership with LMC, um, you know, I outlined just a moment ago some of the things that we can do with our partnership with LMC, we can also expand into as it pertains directly to Limo Anywhere, you know, if you need help getting your rate tables set up, we can assist that. Um, if you need help with social media, blog posts, websites, uh, human resources, um, uh, fractional CFO support, any of those things we can assist with uh, either in-house at Limo Commander with our partnership with LMC. And so I would really encourage everyone to take a look at every dollar that you spend I mean, we're seven months into this. If you haven't done that already, you're, you know, you're, it's time. Um, but, you know, there are a lot of things that you may have done in-house in the past that could be done uh, on a fractional or part-time basis by someone not operating within your office um, that, that one of our two services might be able to help you with. Mm -hmm. That's great. Arnie and Lisa, anything to expand upon there? Not on my end, Lisa. No, I mean, it's, he's, it's, we're on the same, same page. We're doing the same things, offering the same things and, you know, and also agree 100%, you know, as a partner here and we're doing, we're, we're practicing probably this um, same stuff everyone is on this, on these, on this webinar is right now. And, you know, we're there for everybody um, on our end. We're, you know, ready. I mean, cutting costs and watching your cash flow. And you know, sh the shared bottle is exactly what we offer. So, okay, that's great. Um, I'm gonna actually put everybody here on the hot seat for a lightning round. Uh, a couple of additional questions that I had, and uh, they're they're hopefully not too difficult for for you to to to, to address. But I think they would serve our, our listeners well here. Um, and then we can open it up to any Q and A from the from the phone lines. Uh, or the Zoom call, I should say, uh, in more modern terms. So just want to flip the script or reverse engineer. And, and, and for those that have not adopted your, your service um, that might still benefit from some of the best practices uh, or lessons learned that you've observed in, in managing your services across a multitude of businesses, um, you know, what, what might be something of value that the listeners can uh, take a take back from, from this conversation. I, I know Lisa, you had mentioned um, some metrics like KPIs that you typically use for reporting. Um, you know, what, what would be a few nuggets uh, just in terms of your general purview of having so many different operators outsource some of the operational components of their business to you that you see on a common basis that could be um, shared back in terms of best practices or lessons learned? Uh, oh, you're muted, Lisa. There I am, sorry. 
Yeah, I mean, taking back, you know, answering the phones and when you're in your business and you're operating your business, you're focused on obviously the customer service that you're offering that caller. But on the back end, there is, you know, there's, you're watching, you know, how many calls are coming in? How long is somebody on the call? Are they missing calls? Is there hold times or how much time are they spending with the agent, with the agent spending with the client? And then as you're talking and you're doing this, you might have one or two people there, regardless of COVID or no COVID, you know, the industry that you're in and we're in is it takes time on a conversation and you can't predict how many calls are going to come in, when they're going to come in or how they're going to come in or how you need to staff to handle those calls. You can be sitting there twiddling your thumbs for, you know, two minutes. The next thing you know, you have, you know, two calls pending up there or three calls or four calls you know, having a service in place like ours where we can jump in and be invisible to the scene, what your front desk is doing for you, you know, you're going to avoid the whole times. You're going to avoid the, you know, them reaching out and calling somewhere else. Um, and they're able to utilize where our services and we can jump right into limo anywhere and just process the call same, the same way. So, you know, regardless of COVID or no COVID, this is a, you know, it's a, it's always a great backup to have us in place to make sure that, you know, your phones always are being answered. Joey or Arnie? Sure. Oh, Arnie, you want to go? No, no, Joey, you know, it's- I'm your, sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to jump in. Um, no, no. So I, I would encourage people to, uh, first I'm going to second what Lisa said. I mean, you know, again, we've, it's uh, customer service is king right now and getting on that phone call and getting on that phone call quickly um, are important. I would also really encourage people to make sure that uh, that they have their limo anywhere optimized, that it, that they're letting it do all the things that it can do to make their, their lives and their jobs easier. Um, because I, you know, I know as an operator, we've been using limo anywhere for almost 15 years and I find things, I'm not sure whether I should admit this or not. I find things all the time that I didn't know that it could do. And I'm like, crap, I wish I'd have known that 12 years ago, you know? Um, and so I, I, I think we should do that. And, and again, I think, business owners, sometimes we have to realize that we're not good at every component of everything that there is that needs to be done. And so what we really want to encourage people to do is do what you're best at, and then let us do the rest. Let some, you know, outsource the pieces that you either don't have time to get to or that you need assistance with at this moment. That's great. A um, couple of additional questions I had. So and it ties back to your other point, Lisa, on data, I'm a data guy, so we just naturally gravitate towards performance metrics. You know, how, how does that process work with customers that you, you work with with respect to um, sharing back with them um, how calls or reservations or in the case of dispatch, you know, how those, those um, operational elements have been handled and you know how it's trending with respect to performance. Is there a standard report or or a conversation that's held uh, with your clients? Uh, and then we can go back to you, Joey, with the same question. Right. Our clients receive what we call usage reports, and they also receive mid-month reports, and they also can receive them in an immediate action too. So when we take a call or we process a call for or even process a reservation, there are several different check marks of areas that they're re we're reporting back to them. One is we own our own software, so we developed our own message ticket that they get emailed or text out um, real time. Hey, we did this for you. Then they know that they can go into delivery software and they can take a look or that they need the action. But don't forget, if we are working um, live in their software and we're, you know, locating a driver, finding a driver, or, or putting it, and we're processing the call all the way through, there you can just, you know, basically double check. Then we're sending a follow up email through the actual. Um, limo anywhere as well as our own email and so there's and so we're constantly having you know there's two different sides of metrics there's obviously my internal ones that we're looking at on a day-to-day -day basis every morning and that's the first thing I do I roll over I get a beep on my phone it's um, comes through a quarter quarter of five every morning and it's a whole time report and I had them build it so it color grids um, so that helps me and then I trend it out three four four weeks, it comes in as um, shows me three every Tuesday and I see every Wednesday and then I see the four weeks. So I know that how we have to adjust staffing. Is there a trend? Is there not a trend? Is this going on or that going on? So we have our internal metrics and our internal reports that obviously we're staring at every day on how to keep our staffing going, how we're keeping, um, you know, 
with uh, anything that we're doing, our QA and everything. So we're looking at all those type of reports. But then on the customer side, we, we give them what we call usage reports. And the usage report shows duration. It shows, um, you know, time to answer abandonment. So we're able to share all that stuff with them as well. So that's, you know, we're very transparent. Um, and today you, and you have to be because a lot of the VoIP systems that are even out there, even before they're connecting to us, they have their own metrics that they can, that they're looking at as well. Um, and then we're able to compare the two and then have their minute reports and so forth. We build on this. Um, and, you know, with us, we take out anything that's, you know, under a certain amount of seconds, cap at a certain amount of seconds, um, just so because we want to make sure our agents stay within a, a certain duration of a call frame. Got it. Joey? Sure. So um, one of the things that we have added uh, while we've been uh, going through the last couple of months is the, uh, is the ability, one of the abilities that Lisa mentioned, which is the option of being able to send a, a text or an email immediately following a phone call. And then that also gets rolled into what we call an EOS or end of shift report. So uh, either when, the, uh, when our agent ends a shift or when the client goes off shift, they get that end of shift report as well. And, and we're, set, uh, we're set a little bit differently. Um, we like to have a, uh, for the most part, we like to have hours, set hours that our clients are on duty. And that way we can staff appropriately to know that, you know, if we've got, if we've got a bulk of clients on between 4 p.m. and, you know, 2 a.m. or 6 a.m. or whatever the case might be, we can staff appropriately through that period as well as during the day when, you know, there's a, there might be fewer clients on, but call levels are, are higher. And so we, we staff appropriately based on that. And we have overflow options and all of those kinds of things that we take into account as well. But uh, we try to staff based on when the majority of our clients are going to be on, which is basically what Lisa said she was doing too. She, oh. She's looking at it from a minute stand, minutes use standpoint. Um, and so uh, just metric wise, we can provide those reports and call recordings and all those kinds of things um, as well. So kind of touched upon it briefly, but it, it prompted a question in my head when you were, were talking about, um, you know, abandonment for time, call times. Um, how, how are service recovery or service fail uh, instances typically managed if it occurs within the time frame of, of the services provided here for your clients? Is it governed by their own internal uh, processes that they define for you and how to handle if it's on, on the clock? Or, or is there, um, again, back to my earlier point, some best practices that you typically employ based on your knowledge of how to best uh, handle an engagement? Or is it somewhat of a mix? I'm curious just for uh, my own personal edification, but also for the audience. Um, Joe, you want to take this from, you can start with this one. Well, I mean, let me make sure that I understand. So, I if, so if the service issue arises uh, and, and, and it's when we are, for example, with us, if it's a shift that we're on and we're covering for someone and a service issue arises, right. how is that service issue handled at that point? Right. It, 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 to some degree, it depends on what the service issue is. I mean, obviously sure. our first goal is to, uh, based on the parameters that our client has set for us, um, we obviously want to get that caller, that that client, that customer taken care of as soon as we possibly can, with uh, the least, you know, the least number of uh, the smallest hold time, with the least number of. Can you wait a minute and let me see what I can, you know, how I can get that handled for you? So, um, obviously, if it means calling a chauffeur to find out where, you know, how far out a chauffeur is, and you know, we have the ability, obviously, to track them. If the client has GPS and has allowed us to have access to that system, we can track them on GPS and know exactly where they are, just as if you know an agent were sitting in a client's office. So, it, it's it, to some degree it depends on what the you know what the what the service issue is. Sometimes the best option is to is to connect the caller with someone from uh, you know from our clients from the operator's office so that they can handle that in more real time. Uh, but our first option, our, our first choice is always to try to handle that uh, to, to the client satisfaction and the caller satisfaction immediately. Mm -hmm. Okay. I agree 100. When, when we onboard a client, they give us a, obviously a workflow. And with the workflow, there's protocol that we step-by-step step of what we do. 
this scenario, that scenario, this scenario, and go to this, do that. And we take all the steps, the same thing Joey, met, Joey mentioned. And also we, they, we, all, we will always have the ability to connect to the member um, to say, hey, this is what's going on. This is, you know, the situation we have. And I mean, there's different situations that we see, you know, some of, some of them are, you know, obviously finding a driver, locating a driver, somebody's late to, you know, having an accident on the road, um, mm -hmm. having, you know, a car breakdown, um, a, you know, a mer a, an employee emergency and it's one o'clock in the morning and they can't make their, you know, three o'clock rides, you know, so they, the member themselves, when they build the account, build a profile that we, we have step-by-step -step instructions. And we've been, our, our staff, you know, a lot of times, a lot of uh, business owners, especially, you know, in industry, we see that they don't have a, they don't have an employee handbook. They don't have, you know, their business isn't on a, in a, out here on a piece of paper. It's all in their head. So we had to develop our onboarding to pull a lot of information out of their head to put it into, um, you know, basically what we do for um, a lot of operators is we build their employee manual, their employee handbook, and we give them scenarios and situations right. and say, you know, we're handing it to them and saying, well, what do you, what, what would you like us to do in this scenario or this situation? And that's generally, you know, and so it, that's really what we do for them is build their, we're building on the back end. Not only are we helping them assist with, you know, their operations, but we're also, if you think about it, we also help them build, you know, put their business and what's in their head on the, and, and we organize it for them. Right. That, that yeah. actually gets to the heart of part of the reason why I asked the question that uh, I was, Somewhat curious in, in your onboarding process with, with clients, what percentage have all of that information you know, readily available or is the process of onboarding itself an opportunity more often than not to document um, and, and formalize some of those different, like you said, customer service scenarios that might not have been um, inked on paper that can be not only obviously employed for the services they would outsource to you, but also for their own internal um, employees as well um, that that they intend to um, continue on with operations. So I, I could see that as a value add in, in many respects. And if I could just a quick follow up to that is is you know I, I tell my agents it, it I could I could write a book a foot thick and I could make you learn every page of that book and tomorrow there will be a call that's not covered on one of those thousand pages. So it, it really is teaching concepts to the agents so that they understand what our business is and how the business works. And, you know, we can't answer 100% of every question that comes in. There are times when we are gonna have to reach out to the operator to, to get clarification or to get assistance. But I think if we really teach concepts to our agents, which is certainly what we try to do, which is what everybody does when they are, are teaching, you know, when they hire a reservation or dis, a reservationist right. or dispatcher of their own, you know, you can't, you just can't teach everything that might come up in a day. And so yep. you really do have to teach concepts. And uh, just as a quick follow up, I tell the one of operators who are looking at a free trial, expect a lot of questions because this is your opportunity to coach on how you operate your business. In a matter of two weeks, you're going to find out how we operate and we're going to find out how you like it done. And that's our goal is to learn how you like it done. And as Joey put, the book could be two feet thick and it still won't cover anything and everything that can and will happen in the limo business. Yeah. <laughs> that actually is, a, again, perfect segue. I love how this has just been mellifluous in its flow, but uh, my last question before we, I think we have one in the phone or the Zoom call that we're gonna tee up here. And if there are any others, please feel free. Um, how do prospects you know, kick the proverbial tires um, themselves with respect to your services? I know, as I mentioned at the beginning of the call, um, you've generously offered a two week free trial um, for, for them to uh, uh, test out. Um, such a capability within their operations or as an outsourced uh, extension of their operations. Um, there, I would imagine, is a, a bit of back and forth. And as you mentioned, Lisa, you know, wanting to document any idiosyncrasies on how they run their business um, that would be required up front. Um, and, in, and in that two-week time frame, you know, how, how do you ensure that, you know, 
justice is served in terms of giving them an adequate level of exposure to how that uh, service will be provided um, to your customers if they do want to impart this trial. You know, I don't, Arnie, you want to take it or? Uh, yeah, it's just one point that I wanted to clarify that we haven't really expanded on. I tell the operators, we don't do a he said, she said. We record every call. We keep this call for a period of time. Usually it's based on the volume, but it's easily, easily up to 30 days. So I tell them every call is recorded. We keep the recording. You can listen to it. Every state has a different law regarding one and two party notification in terms of call recordings, which means you can't send a recorded call to someone. We also have uh, vi video surveillance. So all of that is to ensure the confidentiality of the client's information, number one, and number two, to point out in the event of a customer service issue, the client gave us these instructions. We repeated those instructions back, and that's what was put into the reservation system. And that gives them a sense of security and comfort because many limo owners have a control issue mm -hmm. and feel that if they have someone else answer the phone, they're giving up a little bit of control. And I explain with these measures, they're still in control because we're going to call, as Joey mentioned, for a decision. But all of the information is kept confidential and in the event of a customer service issue, it can be retrieved and relayed to help resolve that customer service issue. Okay. Uh, Lisa or Joe, anything to add in terms of, of, of any nuggets you'd want customers or prospects to think about in terms of how the typical uh, trial period works with respect to acclimation to those those services that you, you provide? Sure. So um, I, Arnie mentioned it earlier, and that was, you know, we know that we're probably not going to be a good fit for 100% of the operators that are out there. Um, we do things, we do some things differently than Limo Live 24 does, and, and they do some things differently than we do. My advice is to look at our websites, to, to ask for some testimonials, and, and get on the phone with someone, uh, you know, or, or email in your questions or concerns and, and just see who you have the best fit with. See who, see, see who fits what you need most in your business the best. Uh, that, would be, that would be my suggestion. And, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, in relationship to the, to the two week free trial, there is a, there is a lot of information. Those, those first two weeks, as I think Arnie mentioned, you know, you're going to get more phone calls in the first two to four weeks than hopefully you'll ever get again in, in your, in the time of service with us, because there are going to be things that come up that we just don't yet know the answer to. We don't yet know how you want covered, because again, you know, just think of the two foot binder, you know, it's, there's, I just can't ask every question. We try to cover the things that we know are the most important and the most frequent and then we're not going to we're not going to make a decision for you. We're not going to spend your money for you. We're going to reach out to you and let you make that decision. And then we're happy to to carry out the steps that come next. But you know, it's 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 just going to take some time. But like everything, I think it's a relationship, and uh, we would just encourage people to to you know do their homework and and give us an opportunity. Great. Okay. Well, let's let's open it up for a couple of questions here before we adjourn. I know we're running short on time. Back to your earlier point, Arnie, um, there was a question about um, what do you do or how do you provide call recordings to clients? Well, again, the federal law requires that every person who records that call disclose the fact that the call is being recorded, number one. Yep. Again, every state has different laws regarding one and two party notifications. In most states, it's illegal to quote unquote send a call. But if an operator wanted to know what happened on that call, we pull it and have them listen to it, which we, is we legal. Require, we require them to listen to the call with one of our staff members. Right. Um, through our own system. And, and they, we just, you know, and if they want to listen to whatever kind of calls they want to do, they can do that. Um, the majority of the customers that we have, and I think with, um, 
with the way modern day is going, they can they have their own call recordings yeah. uh, on their own da- on their own systems. Yeah. Um, it's kind of rare when you come across that they you know you're not seeing that, but I mean you do see it. But we have no problem pulling and letting them listen to the call with us on with on through our own system. We may we let them listen to it through our own system. Joey, any additional? Uh, no, no, agreed. We um, we have the. I, we have calls back from months and months and months. So, you know, it's it's not usual that it needs to go back that far, um, but we do have those available uh, for people. And, and they can call, I mean, it's it, it's fantastic. We obviously do the the uh, the notification at the beginning of every call that it's being recorded. Um, so it's it is just a lifesaver to have the recorded calls and to be able to go back and listen to those. Sure. Yeah, it definitely is. Yep. No, I, I can attest to that myself uh, with our operations team. It's certainly a, a paramount to any business. Um, one final question that came through, and we're not going to probably be able to do it too much justice at a granular level, but uh, there was just a general question of what services are provided by you, which I believe we've answered. But if there's an additional, any additional points that you want to reemphasize that you provide in your closing. Um, points uh, that we hadn't covered, please do feel free to do so. And then the general pricing uh, 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 of your business, uh, you may not be able to get into specific rates, but perhaps even just the model. And of course, you know, any further follow-up engagements where customers reach out to you on this trial period, you can get into that additional level of detail as you see fit. I'm sure there's several nuances to that question, but if you don't mind um, in your, your closing points, just again, re-emphasizing uh, any points you hadn't already made with respect to your breadth and depth of services, and then um, how you typically uh, uh, charge your clients or what the model is for your business. Did you want to go first, Joey, or you want me to? Go right ahead, sir. <laughs> we we have prepaid packages of minutes like an old cell phone plan that range from 100 minutes for $155 up to and beyond 10,000 minutes a month or anything in between. We have the ability to literally customize packages. Uh, the larger the package, the cheaper it is per minute. The ancillary a la carte services such as driver wake-up calls are two dollars a call. We perform literally full service, as Joey does, full service reservation and dispatch. So in terms of the breadth of the service, we do everything except make a decision. We let the owners, uh, partners, general managers make the decisions as Joey said. We don't spend anybody's money and we certainly don't want to spend any more of their time than we need to be. Our goal literally is to be a silent partner in our members' company's growth. Yeah, and, and so I, I, I agree with, with Arnie. I mean, we as I said, we don't do packaged minutes. So that is one of the differences uh, that in, in what we and how we price our, our least expensive package um, for some for some basic services there through, through a week is $50 a week. And so, um, and, and I'm happy to get into, you know, individually with people, what those, what those cover and what we are able to do. As I mentioned, just basic, basic call answering to full 24 seven reservations and dispatch support is what we do. So it's literally anything that you can think that of that you would do in your own office, we can do from our office for you 99% of the time. So uh, it's it really is a full service option. Uh, we can customize things because we know some people want phone answering but, don't, but they don't want their emails monitored. And some people want wake up calls and some people say my chauffeurs have never missed a wake up. And so, um, uh, you know, we do dispatch monitoring to make sure that that chauffeurs are updating statuses, that they're on their way when they're supposed to be, all of those things. So uh, it really is, uh, it really is a full service uh, business. That's great. Okay. Sorry, one follow up question to the previous point, uh, just to make sure we're 100% clear. The question was with respect to voicemails, how are they accessed? Is it through an email or is it that you get on a joint call and they play it through the phone? Um, how, how, is, how is that typical uh, information relayed? 
for us, we do a joint call with our QA team. Um, we have someone that's assigned to the call recording reviews and they get on the phone and they go through the recording with the, with our client. Okay. Same with you, Joey. Yeah, we okay. just request it. You can call and request it. You can email and request it and we'll make uh, we'll make it available. I mean, and sometimes it has to be live. Like they need something. There's somebody, a driver on site or there's, you know, or there's a situation at, you know, two, three in the morning and, and you know, they'd said here and it's supposed to be there. Can you listen? And so we we're in those emergency type situations. They happen. We all get into it. Yeah. Live with them. Right. We're there. For them, so. And I'm sure, I mean, it, I think it was implied to a certain degree, but there's an economies of scale dynamic with this type of a service, not just from a resource perspective and lowering the cost of, of um, effective ownership, you know, by, by being able to, to um, utilize the same resource for multiple businesses, but also just in terms of learnings, because to your point, you do want to inject the specific or tailored way in which you want to handle customer interactions based on that particular client's way of doing business. But that said, there are softer skills that are acquired over handling service questions or issues across a multitude of customers over a multitude of years that could potentially be leveraged by you know, the, the, the operators in question that are adopting such a service that may not be immediately available uh, you know, with a, a, a new hire that, that they brought on board themselves or even potentially existing staff. So it's another important point to perhaps think about um, with, with a, such a service. So um, with that, I think we're pretty much out of time. Um, any other points or statements that you'd like to make before we adjourn the call? Just in closing, Sean, it's not all bad news. Um, there's some interesting movements on Capitol Hill and in the private sector that our listeners need to be aware of. There's currently a Senate bill that's being discussed. It's the Corona Economic Relief for Transportation Services Bill. Um, it's being pushed by the United Motor Coach Association, but it's also for other livery operators as designated by the Department of Transportation. So $10 billion is not an insignificant amount of money, particularly because it's earmarked for transportation. So if people research, it's called the CERTS Act, C-E-R-T-S, contact their representatives and tell them to get behind and support this bill. Number two, I saw uh, an announcement from the National Limousine Association where the large travel industries are banding together to jointly advertise. Uh, you're probably going to see more of it after the election than before because uh, this COVID has been politicized to the point where people are sick of it. They're banding together and they're saying to the public, when you're ready to travel, we are here to help you plan it. That's their key catchphrase and they're going to spend a very significant amount of money getting that message out. So the operators need to be looking for that. They need to realize that the airlines now are coming out with study after study after study that the air in the airplane because of their medical um, filters and the fresh air intake is safe to travel. And that's all part of a concerted effort to get travel back up on its feet. Because again, no other industry was decimated to the degree that transportation was. Right. Great. No, couldn't agree more. And that's a wonderful tip for us to, to look into as an industry. Uh, fingers crossed that that comes through um, with respect to the 10 billion. Yeah, it's uh, not a standalone bill. It's going to be attached to another bill. <laughs> they can't agree on a, a coronavirus relief stimulus, uh, probably until after the election. Right. Okay. Well, just as a reminder for everybody here, um, we will be sending out uh, an email after the, the meeting to provide you with the information on taking advantage of the, the two-week offer should you not be a customer of either one of our, our partners here um, and, and are interested in, in uh, like I said, kicking the proverbial tires on, on such a service. Uh, I hope you found this informational and insightful. And uh, if there are any follow-up questions, um, the emails for the individuals uh, that were on this call will be also included and we'd be happy to address them um, as soon as possible. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody for their time and have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you, Thanks, Sean. Thanks, everyone. Thanks to Lamar Anywhere.
Thank you guys. We appreciate it very much. Thanks. Bye for now. Cheers. Bye.